In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul reminds us that we are all children of God. For the times that we have not treated each other as sisters and brothers, let us ask God for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our strength and our shield. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you reign in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you entreat us to spread your gospel to the ends of the earth. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. We praise our God in song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Let us pray. <clears throat> God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory, and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take
take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land, which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Ron Rollheiser writes, the most pernicious heresies that block us from properly knowing God are not those of formal dogma, <clears throat> but those of a culture of individualism that invites us to believe that we are self-sufficient, that we can have community and family on our own terms, and that we can have God without dealing with others. But God is community, and only in opening our lives in gracious hospitality will we ever understand that. And so we need this solemnity that reminds us that God is a trinity, a flow of relationships between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and ourselves. Today's scriptures are about relationships of love. The Gospel gives us the concluding words of Matthew, the risen and authoritative Jesus meets the eleven, wounded by betrayal and failure, still a very human mix of hopeful faith and hesitant doubt, of adoration and indecision. For our consolation, 
These are the disciples to whom Jesus entrusts the inclusive mission of making disciples of all nations without distinction of race or culture. With the authority of the risen Jesus, they are commissioned to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and to teach these new followers to obey everything that Jesus has revealed to them during his earthly mission. On their first missionary journey, there had been no command to teach, but now they have experienced not only Jesus' life, but also his death and resurrection. They are equipped to teach the full significance of Jesus' instructions. We who have gathered to celebrate the Most Holy Trinity have been baptized and taught, called and schooled by Jesus through the mission of the Church. We have been drawn into the divine human communion of that first Trinitarian moment of Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan, when the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were named. Matthew gives us the solemn assurance that Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us as the personal promise of God, will be with the Church until the end of human history. He is no absentee lordship, but the presence of a servant Christ who wishes to liberate rather than dominate. His church, therefore, must also be humble, must be a humble servant that identifies with those who are a very human mix of faith and doubt, a church that avoids feelings of superiority and insensitivity to the wounded people of our world. Today's first reading comes from one of the first five books of the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy. The word means second law. Its purpose is not to introduce a new law, but to remind the reader of the tenant of the first, the original Mosaic law. When Moses wants the chosen people to reflect on the nature of their God, he calls them to remember what God has done for them. God took the initiative to love, rescue, teach, form us into his people, and demonstrate his faithfulness to his covenant to never abandon us. The God they have come to know is not distant and aloof, but one who has intimately acted powerfully on their behalf with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. In our liturgy and our lives, we celebrate a God who has done what no other power on earth could do. He has chosen us, loved us without first requiring merit and accomplishment on our part, formed us into a believing people, walked with us through ages, and stayed with us when there was more than enough evidence to convict us of being a sinner. To remember is something we need to put into practice. Jesus gives the eleven their mission. Go, therefore, because you believe and are fully convinced that I am the Messiah, and make disciples of all nations. They can make disciples because they are disciples. It would be worthless to give a command, such a command to those who hadn't first believed, trusted, or committed to the mission of making disciples. You and I cannot give what we do not have. Without attending Mass at least every once every week, receiving the Eucharist, and practicing our faith through frequent reception of the sacraments, we as Catholics will lack the zeal enthusiasm, commitment, and personal investment needed to make disciples for Christ. If you invented some gadget and needed to hire a salesperson to promote it and sell it, you would not select someone who was not completely sold on the benefits of it, had no interest in talking about it, and perhaps might speak detrimentally about it. You would want someone who spoke about your gadget with fire excitement, enthusiasm, and someone who they themselves bought the product, considers it a must-have item, uses it every day, and will personally demonstrate its value to people. Will we give from what we have received? Jesus has the power and gives the power to the most committed disciples for the task at hand. Such power cannot fail. It is backed by the Holy Spirit's seal of approval. 
Everyone here today knows someone who would benefit from being here also. Although weekly mass attendance is recovering from the pandemic, we need to challenge each other to invite and accompany someone you know to mass next week. As Jesus commanded his 11 disciples to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. He calls all of the baptized to become his missionary disciples and reminds us that the sacrament of baptism is the clearest expression of the church's belief in the Trinity. The most holy Trinity is a mystery, not needing to be solved, but to be embraced. In the final analysis, we are speaking about imitating the close personal relationship God the Father had with Adam and Eve before the fall, then with Abraham and many of the patriarchs and prophets, about the close personal relationship Jesus had with his apostles and everyone else who believed in faith that he was the Messiah, a close personal relationship with the Holy Spirit that Holy Spirit had with Peter, and all disciples as recorded in the Acts of the Apostles beginning at Pentecost. Each of us, through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, has that same Holy Spirit empowering our good deeds. Today's Gospel closes with Jesus' words, And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Jesus, God incarnate, is with you and me at this Mass. We have heard his words in prayer, song, and scripture. Soon we will be nourished by him truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. At dismissal, we'll hear these words or similar words, go and announce the gospel of the Lord. So, filled with the love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may we leave this space and embrace all whom we encounter. Solid church. Just one baptism for Jesus' sins. Look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Life of the world to come. Amen.
We pray for the church. May all who are baptized in Christ know that they are blessed in order to serve others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the nations of the world. May their leaders give priority to serving the needs of the poorest among them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country and all who call it home. May we who are many become one so that we may live in peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the elderly and the infirm who require long-term care. May they know their preciousness in the eyes of God and their importance within the community of faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an abiding respect for God's gift of human life. May all lives be treasured, from those soon to be born into this world to those soon to depart from it. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. May we be one with them as we pray for their healing. We pray to the Lord. We pray in thanksgiving for all of our blessings. May we give as a gift what we have received as a gift. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the grace of humility. May we forgive others as God forgives us. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died. In particular, for all who have died in the service of our nation. And we also pray for all who have suffered violent deaths. May they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord.
for those participating in the liturgy from home. Please join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Triune God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you call us to draw closer to you and to each other. Hear our prayers that are emboldened by your grace, that we might live and preach the gospel of your love and your care to the ends of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Many thanks to those that make our live stream of Mass possible. Tuesday night community nights continue on Zoom. You'll find the link in the bulletin. Communion ministry to people who are at home in care centers and in hospitals have resumed. At this time, one additional communion minister is needed for hospital ministry on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Hospitality after Mass is scheduled to resume in late summer and early fall, and we are looking for a coordinator for this. Father's Day cards are now available in the gathering space and at the parish office. All Masses on June 19th and 20th will be celebrated for the intention of all fathers, living and deceased. Please complete the outer envelope and return it to the parish office, or place it in the collection basket in the church. The parish office and the church will be closed on Monday, May 31st for the observance of Memorial Day. There's no Mass on Monday. And please circle August 22nd on your calendar for the parish picnic at Spring Meadow State Park. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks.